everyone, it's John here, and in today's video we're going to take a look at how we can create a calendar table in Power Query. So I've got this date set up here in a table, and this date is driving this table here. So this is a query that references this date and produces the calendar for that particular month. So the date I've got in there is May 1st, 2019, and the 1st of May in 2019 is Wednesday. And then it's got 31 days. And now if I change this, so if I change this to uh, June and right click and refresh, then my calendar is gonna update as well. So uh, the 1st of June is a Saturday and there's 30 days in June. So let's take a look at how we built this. So this is all gonna be based off a single date and we've got that date inside a table. So it's a table of a single column and a single row. And then we're gonna go up to the data tab and create a table range query from that single date. And we're just gonna quickly turn that into a date instead of a date time. And replace the current step. And from this single date, what we're gonna do is go to the add column tab and we're gonna get the start of the month from that. And we're just gonna select it again. And we're also gonna get the end of the month from that. Now with that end of the month column selected, we're also going to extract the day from that so that we get the last day of the month. And with this information, what we can do now is go to the add column tab and add a custom column. And we're gonna add a custom column that's gonna list out all the dates in our month. So I'm just going to call this dates and we're going to use the list dot dates function and we need to give it the start of the month or the start of the list of our dates and then we need to give it a number which is going to be the number of dates in our list so we're going to use our last day of the month for that. And then we also need to give it a duration to increment our list by each time. So we're going to increment it by one day each time. And we can press OK. And that gives us a list of dates here. And we can expand that list and expand it to new rows. And let's just change that into a date. And now we're also going to want to extract the day from this list of dates. So with that column selected, let's go to the add column tab and extract the day from that. We also want to get the day of the week for each of these dates. So with that column selected back in the add column tab, let's go to the name of the day. And that's going to give us Friday, Saturday, Sunday, etc. for each of our dates. And just so our column headings in our calendar aren't too long, we're just going to extract the first three characters of this. So let's go to transform and extract and first characters. And let's take the first three. And because we want the first column in our calendar table to always be a Sunday, we're gonna be very interested in what day of the month is the first Sunday. And to find that out, we're going to filter on our names and just filter on Sundays. And then we're gonna be interested in the corresponding day. So if I right click on the first entry there and drill down, that's gonna get me a single value, which is the day of the month that the first Sunday appears. But now we're, we're gonna to want to get back to this part of our query where we had all the days of the month listed. And to do that, we're just gonna add another step. And instead of referring to the previous step, we're just going to refer to the extracted first character step. And if I accept that, then we get back to uh, where we were before we filtered and drilled down. 
So that's the exact same step. And now we're gonna add one last column and we're gonna have it based on this day column. And we're gonna divide that column or the numbers in that column by seven. So seven days of the week. And we're gonna take the integer part of that division. And we can press okay. And we can see that what we get is the first seven rows have a zero and then the next seven rows have a one and so on. And now we're actually gonna use this column and the column with our days of the week in it to pivot our data. And what that's gonna do is for each of these zeros, those are each gonna be on a separate row then. And each of these ones are gonna be on a separate row, etc. But if we do that as is, we're not gonna get the calendar table the way we want it. So what we really want is to have Sunday have a one, and then all the days up to Saturday be a one as well. And then the next Sunday we want to be a two, and down to Saturday, that should also be two. And then the next Sunday, three, etc. So we basically want Sunday to always be the starting uh, value for this integer. And as it is right now, that's not the case. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to edit our integer division formula. So we're still on that step right here. And if I add seven minus, and I, if I refer back to my day one step, And remember that contained the value of the first Sunday. And if I accept that, then that gets me exactly what I want. So here you can see that Sunday is where we go from zero to one. And then the next Sunday we go from one to two. And the Sunday after that we go from two to three, etc. And now I'm ready to pivot. So first I'm just gonna remove these columns that I don't need anymore. And then I'm gonna select my two columns that I wanna pivot and go to the transform tab and pivot columns. And the value column that we're gonna pivot is our day column. And then we're going to not aggregate that and we can press okay. And now we don't need this column either. So we're gonna get rid of it. And the last thing we have to do is just reorder this. So we wanted Sunday as our first column. So we're gonna shift Friday over here and Saturday. And you can see that's exactly what we, we wanted. So here we don't have any values. And then the first of the month is the Friday. Second of the month is Saturday. Third is the Sunday. So we're done and we can close and load this to a table. And we're just gonna put it in the same sheet and press okay. And there we go. We've got our nice little calendar table starting on Sunday and it's dynamic. So if we change our date here and maybe change that to the next month and we can right click and refresh this and we've got our calendar for April now. So that's how we can take a single date and turn it into a calendar table with Power Query. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for future videos on Excel and Power Query. That's it for this video. We'll see you guys next time.